Howdy peeps, welcome back to the channel. <coughs> so what has Sharpie got for you today? Well it's just another quick sort of uh, hints and tips, tricks, techniques-y kind of video. Just a few things that have come up recently that yeah, I thought I'd share and that's what that's what the hobby runs on, sharing. Alright, so where to start first? Well, firstly, I was um, listening to someone's live show the other day, and they made a statement which, um, how can I put it, was a lie, basically. There's no real other way to put it, I mean, you can pretty things up, but it was an untruth. And they said that you cannot stick Games Workshop or Citadel plastic with Tamiya Extra Thin. Now, I know this not to be the case because I've built several Games Workshop models and the glue I use is Tamiya Extra Thin. And heck, I've got one in the process of being built at the moment. And that's all stuck together with Tamiya Extra Thin. Right. So... Just in case people don't believe me, here is some Citadel plastic. Does it actually say Citadel on the sprue? There we go. Just in that corner, Games Workshop 2011. So let's chop a couple of bits off and stick them together just to prove this person wrong. Uh, here we go. Because, okay, you know, we all make mistakes from time to time, and sometimes we get things wrong. But if someone makes a mistake, gets something wrong, it can cause confusion, trouble, problems for people who might be listening. Now, I'll, I'll be the first to hold my hand up and say, if I've messed something up, I'm sorry, let me know. You know? <laughs> I try not to do it. Oh, nah, I'm not even going to bother dry fitting because I'm not using these. So here we go, look, look. Tamiya Extra Thin. Games Workshop Citadel Plastic. It's the same plastic they use in all their kits. Turn me extra thin. Line the bits up in the right orientation. Always the case with these getting the actual tongue through the mouth parts is. stuck together and I'll come back to it later and show that it is indeed stuck and it's not just holding together by some miracle now there's, there's going to be quite a Games Workshop flavour to this video um, I'm fully aware a lot of the people who might play the Games Workshop games don't pay any or much attention at all to the more scale modelling side of it. And I know a lot of scale modellers won't or don't touch Games Workshop products. Now, there are no reasons for it, but sometimes things cross over. And this is, this is definitely one of them. <coughs> Something Citadel make. They call them their dries, well, dry brushing paints. This one, Necron Compounds. Basically, it's just a very bright silver. Now if I pop the lid on that, you can see, bright silver paint. But what makes these different to most other people's paints, 
turn them upside down, nothing falls out. I can probably hold it there for quite some time before anything drops, but as you can see, no movement whatsoever. So basically they're more of a paste than a paint, they're very thick, but we can use that to our advantage. So for chipping, for example, so we've got sponge chipping, we've got a bit of sponge in the squeezers. Just a very gentle dab into the paint. Knock the excess off a little, because we're not trying to do anything subtle or great here. And because it's so thick, it does only pick it up on the high points of the sponge. So you can add chipping very easily without getting the great big blotches that you can get using a thinner paint such as a Vallejo Model Air or Model Colour or Tamiya or whatever. Let's just go a bit silly. And if I hold this up to the camera, excuse the shininess, but you can see very quick, very easy, and that will be dry in a matter of seconds. So, we have that. Also very useful if you wanted to do edge highlighting. Uh, you can get some on a brush. And because it's thick, it doesn't run or go anywhere. It just stays exactly where you put it. So, what can we do? As an example, we will just edge highlight Helps if it's a bit of a more pronounced edge, but it does go exactly where you want it and nowhere else. He says, getting it all over the canopy, but no, there is a use for a thick, gunky paint. Just clean it out of the brush, wipe it on my trousers, but. An Another tool that can be very useful for this is the um, silicone clay shapers, colour shapers, whatever they get called. Come in various shapes and sizes. I prefer a relatively small flat head brush, I guess you'd call it, shaped like a screwdriver. So you can pick it up just on the very tip of that. And be very controlled about where the paint goes because you don't have bristles that will bend or move. So we can just apply the paint exactly where we want it on all the high points. He says getting it on the canopy again. But water based takes a little while to dry so if you're being a bit more careful than I am, let's just uh, hold that up so you can see. If you're a little more careful, you can get some very good results with it. Now they don't just do silver, there's I think 31 different colours in the range of the dry brush paints. And you know, for edge highlighting, edge chipping, it's superb as long as you're careful, but more forgiving than most others. Speaking of edge chipping, that is another use for one of these. If you're trying to chip the edge of a tank or a trailer, and you're using the hairspray technique, just no, hairspray, paint, get the paint damp afterwards, but if you just just want chipping right along the very edge, it can be tricky with a paintbrush. Again, using one of these in whichever shape you prefer, you can use it to make tiny little chips right along the edge. And as I say, re I've not had one for very long. 
well, uh, four, five, six months, but I keep finding new uses for them. A very good tool to have in your armory. Definitely recommended. <clears throat> they can be a little pricey, but well worth it. <sighs> what was next? As you may have seen with this, uh, what is a Tyranid Hive Tyrant or Fly Flyrant or whatever. As you can see with the wings, now obviously there's a lot of work still to do on this, but that shading effect is really easy to do. All I've done with this, primed it in UMP grey, I say because the bottle is still there, and using the Citadel Air, my fist on red, painted the whole of the wings. And then using the Citadel shades, which again, most of them are in colours you're not likely to really want to use most of the time with scale modelling. So they're fairly funky and bright. But using a combination of the Druki Violet and the Drakenhof Nightshade, which is basically, let's go with purple and dark greeny, purpley bluey ink. I mean, they're a water based product, obviously and just running them through the airbrush because they're thin and translucent you can very easily attain that kind of shading it's a matter of minutes rather than trying to do it with a brush and it would take you absolutely hours to to get that kind of effect so again maybe not uh, fully usable for scale modeling but I mean, there is one one colour of wash which I would say you absolutely had to have, or shade, sorry. And you can't actually see it because the bottle is so grubby, and it won't wash off, rub off, sorry. And the bottle is virtually empty again. Is the null oil, which is black oily wash, and that is useful in all sorts of places. Basically anything you've got on a model that is metallic, you know, metal landing gear parts, have you got anything I've used it on? Uh, yeah, I used it on the Spitfire, on the Spitfire's undercarriage, oh, bash the camera. You can see, literally just painted silver and then the null oil wash over it, it picks out all the details, as you would with a wash. Sorry, shade, I keep calling it a wash. Um, picks out all the details and it makes it look oily and grubby. Skill in a pot. Again, a great product. In no way am I endorsed by Games Workshop. I would love to be, but I'm not. So. And finally, I think, looking at my list. Dettol. Not just for cleaning the floor or anything that might need degunking. This stuff is apparently also a really good paint stripper. Now I've used it to clean my brushes and I can confirm that it does work there. So now what we'll try and do, again live on camera which is probably a bad idea because that's usually when things go wrong and I'm going to tip the debt all over the place. And just find a bit of uh, random paint, spread a bit on, and it should, in theory, well, that is gloss, so we'll put some on a non glossy part. Not only is it gloss, it's got about a hundred coats of paint on it. <laughs> Being a paint mule, it's got a lot of paint on it. Again, wash out the brush. And yes, the brush has come out cleaner than it went in. And I think you're supposed to leave this a little longer. And what I'm going to do before I knock the bottle of Dettol over, because I know you're going, go on, knock it over, knock it over. I'm going to put the lid back on. Mwahaha. 
is that would probably get me the most views I've ever had on a video, but I'd rather not do it. So we have the Dessol on the paint. Now I can already feel that the paint is gumming up and it's eh, it's not coming off straight away. It does need a little bit of soak time. But I can you know, feel just by the way that the uh, cotton bud is sticking to it a little that it's definitely starting to come up. Um, as we say, these things don't work instantly, it does take a bit of a soak. That's better where it's not gloss paint and not had gloss coats on it or anything like as many layers of paint. Even just those few seconds you can see if I bring you see all the paint coming off on the cotton wool bud and that is just a few seconds so if you paint it on and leave it half an hour, a couple of hours or whatever the paint will just slough right off the plastic and the Dettol won't do anything at all to the plastic. It'll be, it's perfectly plastic safe. As is Mr. Leveling Thinner. Now it's expensive stuff and it kind of seems a bit churlish to use it as a paint stripper. It's not only is it expensive, sometimes it's rather tricky to get hold of. But oh, doing it out of shot. Literally just gonna dunk cotton wool bud in it. Being sure to keep this stuff off the cutting mat because it will it's lacquer thinner, it'll take the lines straight off. And if we go to another let's let's go on the canopy, shall we? And this paint has been on here for donkeys. So this is one of my this is oh, this is my oldest paint mill, and you can see not only is it getting all the paint off with minimal effort, it isn't damaging the clear parts at all, and they're probably a bit cloudy and manky, but that's got more to do with the fact that. There's so much gunk on this thing. I mean, colour of that. If I bring that up. And there we are. I heard that trick from Norman D. Norman Dennison. The sexy beast. One of the many sexy beasts that we have in the hangouts. And that's got the paint off the canopy. It's not damaged the plastic at all. So that's an easy solution to that problem. And then back to the Tamiya Extra Thin on the Citadel. It's not quite set, but... <laughs> it's taking some serious effort to pull that off. So yes, you can pull it off. But... <laughs> It definitely sticks it. There we go. That'll do me for today. I hope you have had a good weekend. Have a good week. Enjoy your modelling. Have fun. Peace out. Rock on. Bye bye.